So there is this new game that came out called Dungeonborn, and I just really want to make it clear that initially, when my friend Milanesa sent me a link to the game, he explained it to me as Escape from Tarkov, but medieval. Now little did I realize that I already played this game. It just went by a different name. That game being Dark and Darker. What I found after playing Dungeonborn is that there are things this game does right compared to its rival Dark and Darker. So sit back, relax, and let's go over some of the key differences, and also what makes these games so alike, but still to their own tastes. Dark and Darker is already known as a difficult game. Monsters are everywhere, everything hurts a lot, and if you're new, you're likely not going to know what to do due to a lack of a tutorial or really any sort of guide to get you started. For some, the difficulty is what makes this game special, as you have to actually play carefully in order to progress. There's a lot of times where this becomes very difficult to do though, such as when you see another group of adventurers nearby, or when you start running out of time. Some rooms are full of really aggravating monsters, and for some classes, this can be extremely problematic. Keep in mind as well, there is no key for sprinting, no key for pulling up a map, and all of your attacks are directional. This means that as you hold your attack button down, the crosshair will change to show you the direction of the attack, so you need to be aware of how the swing's gonna go. Now if you get hit once, you're already in danger. Enemies will chunk you, traps will decimate you, and there is not a lot of ways to get your HP back quickly. In order to essentially win, you have to survive long enough to find a staircase, a rope, or a portal that allows you to leave the dungeon. There are also corrupted or red portals that'll take you to an extra hard dungeon, but we're not going to be going over those though, as they are much harder than the regular dungeon in many ways already. Similar to Dark and Darker, Dungeonborn hosts a lot of different monsters and even a good few traps that you can run into. The difference here is that unless you choose the classic map type, there isn't seemingly as many enemies in one area, and they do not chunk you nearly as much. While the monsters are not as hard as the ones in Dark and Darker, the battles with other players is much more exciting. This game unfortunately also suffers from the same issue of Dark and Darker, in which there is still no key for sprinting. However, we do get a lovely benefit of being able to open the map to see where we're going, plan a route, and see where the certain bosses spawn. Combat feels more fluid, not as clunky. And you could take a good few hits from a monster before needing to heal. Healing in this game is way more noticeable. You can take a bandage and go back to battle rather quickly, drink a potion and have a decent regeneration, or get your HP back passively if you have certain equipment, or from the potions that drop every once in a while. This helps players get back into the action and not just have to sit around for several minutes to get a fraction of their health bar back. To win in Dungeonborn, you still have to locate portals and make your way out before you're hunted down. The difference with this, however, is that unless you have a ritual scroll, your location on the map will be pinged so anyone nearby is alerted that someone's trying to escape. This adds an extra element of intensity to opening a portal, as you never know who's just around the corner and got a ping on their device to tell them that you are ready to be ravaged. There are corrupted red portals in Dungeonborn as well, and while I haven't yet made it to one, I can be certain that this is likely just as difficult as the one in Dark and Darker, probably. Dark and Darker features 9 classes. Each class has their own armor set they can wear, their own passives and active skills, and stats that benefit them separately. The nine classes are Fighter, Barbarian, Rogue, Ranger, Wizard, Cleric, Bard, Warlock, and Druid. Now, by default, you can only have one character on your account. What this means is that in order to try the other classes, you're going to have to delete your only character. This gets rid of everything in your stash and loses your unlocked ability slots too. 
The only way to increase the amount of character slots you can have though is to pay real currency to unlock your legendary status. For the sake of the video though, we're not going to be looking into the cash shop much more than this, so just know that in order to utilize some of the main features such as trading with others and entering the high roller dungeons, you will need to have a legacy account. Looking at the skills and stats of our character sheet, you can see on the right hand side we have perks, which are essentially passives, skills, which are the active ones, and our stats on the left side. Around the character is an arc with uh, diamond shapes. As you level up, you can start putting more perks onto your character. You can only unlock a diamond shape to place something into every five levels. You only have two active abilities and you can switch them out as you see fit, allowing for some good customization for your character. The diversity of the classes is a plus for this game, with the druid probably being one of the more noticeable ones. My friend Milanesa here can transform into different animals such as a chicken, panther, bear, or even a little rat depending on his situation. All in all, it's really all up to your playstyle. And hey, since you can only have one character anyway, might as well try them all at least once before settling down, right? Dungeonborn only has 8 classes, but with it, they also have a race type. Skills and passives are acquired differently here, and a couple classes can change their actives. The rest of the classes do not have that capability. From the classes available, you can choose to be a fighter, priest, rogue, pyromancer, death knight, cryomancer, swordmaster, or a druid. As a bonus, you even have a character customization something that was completely missing from Dark and Darker. Now you can make your character more personable before you set out. At the bottom of your inventory, you will see your stats. The ones that are more prominent are ones that you can hover over to see what type of passives they provide when you reach a certain threshold. This plays a vital role in planning a playstyle for your character and can really change the way combat goes, usually in your favor. I previously briefly mentioned the race types, and it is important to note that they actually do something. Humans for one have increased inventory space. Elves have the capability of turning invisible upon crouching, and undead suck the mana out of enemies on death, which is the only way that they can get mana back at all. This detail may seem small, but it can really be useful to remember. Okay, here's the part where the game really needs work. In Dark and Darker, you sell items to a merchant. Which merchant? <laughs> That's a good question! Each item you bring back from a dungeon goes to certain NPCs. If you try to sell to the wrong one, it says they're not interested. Honestly, this just feels pointless as you're going to end up backing out and going to the correct vendor later anyway to sell it to them. So why not just make it where they all buy everything without any extra hassle and extra clicking. Not only is this uh, dumb, but the key bindings or shortcut keys used to sell items are not exactly intuitive. If you right click to sell an item, like in most games, it equips the item instead. Instead, what you have to do is shift left click, I think, in order to add it to their window first. That is, if you remembered to click on the Cell tab beforehand. This gets tedious and annoying, especially when you have to keep backing out of the menu just to go to a different trader every time. Crafting's not much of an improvisation either. In order to craft, you have to gather ore from dungeons. Makes sense. Ore can only be mined if you remember to purchase a pickaxe beforehand. Manage to find your way to an ore, then manage to escape with it as well. Normally, when I buy a pickaxe, I end up not finding an exit if I even manage to mine anything, or I get mugged immediately after. Needless to say, I haven't yet successfully crafted in Dark and Darker, and I really don't think I'm going to be doing it anytime soon. After you sell items to a merchant, your money is sent directly to your inventory. There is never any reason to bring money to the dungeon with you, so it should honestly just go to your stash. 
Stash management is also quite tedious as your money take up single slots and can only be placed in stacks of like 10 gold coins or something. Well, that is unless you have a gold bag, which allows you to have like 50 gold coins per slot, but still, that's not a lot. And last but not least, let's, well, it's hard not to do, but let's not forget about quests. Quests are also available in this game, but they are so annoying to do that I honestly forgot to get really anything to showcase them at all, because um, they're just easily forgettable and they don't really feel worth it. I played several matches before I even accidentally found out that quests even existed. And that's really all there is to that. As a complete contrast from everything I just said, Dungeonborn does it all very well. You go to the merchant, you can sell everything and anything. No worries about multiple trips to different people whatsoever. Your money? Well, it's stored at the top along with your other resources for crafting. Speaking of crafting, it's gotta be annoying, right? No, no, no. It's not even in the slightest. You can find these little cloud potion things and yarrow flowers on dungeon runs or from quest rewards that you turn into potions and bandages very easily at the alchemist. The alchemist, by the way, is super easy to understand and the best part is all of your crafting material can be pulled out of your stash to be used. Uh, so you don't have to waste any time and inventory space to actually make anything. Honestly, I have no complaints whatsoever for this. There's another side to crafting as well, and it goes by the name of heirlooms. Heirlooms are essentially equipment that you make by dismantling other equipment that you don't want. Collect resources from doing so, and then use those resources to unlock the ability to make an heirloom item. You can only have one heirloom of a type equipped, so this means one accessory heirloom, one armor heirloom, and one weapon. You can still steal heirloom equipment though from other players, so if you want a full set, you'll want to hunt down other people to complete it. And you can even add bonus stats to your equipment. This system is great and adds another way to get those stats for your passive abilities. And how could I ever forget about those quests in this game? Dungeonborn did this so right that it's hard for me to even pretend that I didn't even know they existed. Quests pop up immediately upon login, so you'll see your daily quests there. Speaking of, you have dailies, weeklies, and seasonal quests. Completing these may require you to have a certain class, race, or do something specific, but none of this is a problem though since you're not capped at just one character per account, so you can freely do any quest you like, anytime. The rewards are also pretty good too, ranging usually from money and crafting supplies to ascension potions which help speed your leveling up. Speaking of leveling, let's do that. When you level up in Dark and Darker, you don't really get anything. Sure, you get a new passive slot every 5 levels, but that's about as noticeable of a difference it is, as it gets. Dungeonborn though, they see that you get your stats as you level up, so you always get stronger and closer to being able to always have a passive eventually. This really rewards playing more, and incentivizes using those ascension potions too. Now I don't want to straight up say one game is better than the other, but I know for a fact which one I find more enjoyable. Both games have their perks, but really the quality of life improvements, the feel of combat, the map design, and everything really just feels so much better to me in Dungeonborn that I just really can't play Dark and Darker the same way anymore. This isn't to say that D&D is a bad game by any means, it just means that until they improve some of the ways that trading and such works, I'm likely not going to be going back to it anytime soon, which is unfortunate because I really wanted to play that game for the longest time, but due to their whole ordeal they were going through, you know, the whole... Yeah, uh, well I had to wait for it. You may have even noticed that I even made a couple of videos showcasing it a long while back when I was playing it with Skyland. Either way, I hope this all helps you guys with your journey and the understanding of both games. As always, the name is Fudge Merchant, and I hope you enjoyed your stay at the cafe. 
Now, please be sure to like and subscribe, join the Discord if you wish, and also be sure to check out the Twitch at twitch.tv slash fudge merchant, as I'm much more active there. I put a lot of effort into this video, and I'm really trying to get more videos out there, so I'd like to see the fruits of the labor come to fruition. Thank you guys. Love y'all. Mwah.